Ladies and gentlemen, very good afternoon. Thank you very much for coming. And I would like to say how, uh, how very happy I am that we finally, after almost a year and a half now, nearly two years, actually get to the stage where we start this uh, wonderful uh, new journey together. Tomorrow I uh, have seen this wonderful hall of ours, but I hear it for the first time tomorrow. And I'm uh, also glad to hear that everybody is as excited about this as I am. I was hoping that, I, I hope that we will find many opportunities where we can uh, establish the fact that we are spontaneous music makers, that we try to make all music that we perform say something, that uh, a concert experience should be something that is to be uh, enjoyed and to be remembered. But actually it's very simple. Um, what I wish to do and what we have worked together to do is, can be said as one thing. It's about sonority. Uh, it's about sonority and it's about flexibility of sonority. Sonority in the sense that uh, I, we need to look for beauty of sound and we need always to be thinking about the sound we make. And flexibility in the sound to see that we can change this sonority as quickly as possible, which is why a lot of the programs that we have combine works of quite different epochs. Uh, sound is something that is extremely important to me as a musician and flexibility of sound means that from bar to bar or indeed piece to piece and it's uh, I'm very happy that we ended up by agreeing on in the space of five six different uh, concert programs to then be able to concentrate on works of the German uh, repertoire of which that still remains the vast uh, proportion I think of the the work that we need to do so we managed to m work our way from Haydn, Schubert, Brahms, Bruckner and Wagner at the same time we managed also then to go to the second Viennese school and have Weben and Berg with along with Mahler and we managed to get into the later 21st century with uh, Dai Fujikura and, and Takemitsu. Um, so the, f f the sort of the, the amount of different types of music, I'm extremely happy that everybody was happy to go along these lines with me. Of course, we, we learn m about ourselves as people and certainly as musicians when we get to extremes. And so I was also looking for as many extremes as possible so that these musicians and myself can find out exactly where, where our limits are. But I also like very much the fact that we've managed to play with sonority in the sense of different sizes of sound worlds within the same program. That if we are having Parsifal in the second half, that we can devote 18 minutes of a first half to beg lyric suite, which happens to be a piece for strings, which is also extremely important to discover what are the boundaries of our sound as orchestral sound as a string players. And of course, one other point that I was very, um, find very important, we're a Japanese orchestra, and when we're thinking about touring to Europe, it uh, seems to be very important that we uh, remain a Japanese orchestra. So, uh, with again, within the <laughs> only six different programs, we managed to uh, have a, a new piece by Dai Fujikura, who I, I know very well and, and think is a very fantastic composer, also with soloists of our orchestra. Or um, we simply try and make sure that we play as much Japanese music as possible also within these these programs. So th this season really for me was an excuse to have fun, to excuse to see exactly, to show up our wonderful public what types of music I think are, are, are wonderful music, to show with the musicians 
exactly how flexible we can be and to give us, them and myself, enough opportunities to discover who we are. So, by my first concert, I was lucky enough to be given the opportunity to play with wonderful sensual orchestral sound in the French repertoire. And by my second concert, which we start rehearsals tomorrow, I'm given the fantastic opportunity of making wonderful, uh, deep, rich, German sounding uh, Strauss. And I wish us all, orchestra and myself, and all of us involved, and you too. Uh, let's say um, that we enjoy, uh, that we have enough courage to go towards these, uh, find out our limits, and that we enjoy the experience of what we discover when we're at them. Thank you very much. Um, yes, of course, because it's always a great uh, shock when you go along a pathway and suddenly something completely unexpected throws everything out. But uh, uh, in my experience of those situations, it usually means that uh, everybody has to, is challenged to make something new. And uh, I, I'm sure that the, the, the time in between has been something of a challenge. I, I, I saw this hole when it was, uh, well, a year ago, when it was just a bit of a shell inside, but it's, uh, it, it, it's always, as, for me, something that is ab about growth these kind of disasters and, and um, you know it's a terrible shame when something like this happens and uh, but I, I feel as though that this belongs to the whole point of why we're playing mu music because it's supposed to we're supposed to find answers to sort of some of these questions about existence and fate and all the rest of it so I think it only strengthens an ensemble actually but I have to say that this hall is famous in in Europe it, it's uh, not only is it famous in Europe as being, I mean, Japan is famous anyway for having fantastic concert halls, but this hall specifically, and I have to say, it is a great gift to any orchestra having its own hall where you can rehearse and make music. It makes the development of a relationship and sound and listening to each other so much uh, easier. So I think this, that, that is a great shame that the orchestra wasn't in this hall for this time, but Hey, you know, uh, we look to the future and it's going to be very, very good fun. I'm looking forward to tomorrow very much.